Hi, my lovely Frosty fam. It's me, Karen Frost, here at Nelka Decadence. Welcome to my channel. Welcome, one and all. I have a rather long video to share with you guys, so grab yourself a cup of tea, get yourself comfortable, and uh, yeah, we're in. You're in for a, a whole thing. So, whilst I'm showing you what I'm going to be using, I just want to point out that um, I did uh, French, so it was a white tip uh, design what I should have used was that gel paint that I just showed you that small um, little pump bottle instead of using the gel polish because the gel polish needed two coats to make it fully opaque and you know a nice bright white whereas the gel paint I would have only had to have done one layer I don't know why I wasn't thinking straight I should have used the gel paint instead of the um, what do you call it gel polish that's why I showed you that in the beginning so yeah don't don't I'm um, yeah I just wasn't thinking straight and I used the gel polish instead of the gel paint which just made the the process a whole lot longer than it needed to be so yeah just bear that in mind anywho let's get into it so I'm showing you the full process that's why the video is as long as it is um I'm not a fast nail tech I take my time I'm not quick um, so yeah that's the even though the video is sped up it's still very long I'm showing you the process of how I um, how I work when I'm not doing my own nails so when I've got you know a real person in front of me with two hands <laughs> um, this is how I work I work from one hand to the other and so that's why I'm showing you the whole process rather than just showing you one hand and as I said I'm just going to go right from the beginning so the beginning of the process is disinfect use <laughs> use disinfectant Make sure your client has washed their hands before you start. Use some disinfectant on your own hands as well as their hands before you even begin the process. Then um, I'm going to, I, that, well you saw already, I take my e-file with a carbide bit and I'm removing majority of the product. Reason being I'm using a different pink than she had, uh, than she had on, uh, on her nails. So I don't want the, the, the colour difference to be noticeable, therefore I'm removing, removing the majority of the product. If I was just going to infill with the um, same colour of, of pink polygel, then I would have just um, removed the top coat and infilled, you know, rebalanced kind of thing. But because I'm using a different pink altogether, that's why I'm filing down all of the product so that you know I can apply fresh product just bear that in mind because you might be thinking why am I removing all of the product if I'm just doing an infill well it's because I'm doing a color change essentially so yeah it's an infill um, I do have another video uh, of doing my this is my daughter by the way I do have another video of doing doing my daughter's nails with some poly gel which I will be um, uploading fairly soon I'm, I'm sort of halfway through editing that and it's another long one um, but yeah anywho as you can see this was around Valentine's time which is why she's got all the little hearts on um, I'm not sure if I filmed the video of me doing the, the, the nails that she has on with the pink heart can't remember if I filmed that or not probably not most to be honest most of the time I don't film doing my daughter's nails because she keeps it very simple she's not outrageous like I am <laughs> she likes it more basic and the fact that she had hearts on her nails was was out of her comfort zone completely normally it's just plain pink or maybe a French She's very, well, basic. She, it, the way she likes to have her nails is very simple, very basic. She's not, like I said, outrageous like I am with loads of colours and designs and whatnot. Um, so majority of the time when I do her nails, I don't I don't film it because, you know, it, it, to me it's boring. <laughs> so every now and again I'll, I'll film it. But yeah, I decided to film uh, the, the info of this set and um, just give you the whole process from start to finish. And as you can see, whilst I'm... Um, 
filing down the product, I'm also removing any lifted product as well. Polygel is softer than um, acrylic, so it, it, it files really easily. So I'm also trimming down the length. She likes her nails um, really short. She, she doesn't like to function with long nails at all. So as you see, I just shorten them the way she as short as she wants them to go and um, I'll tidy them up with the hand file afterwards but yeah she tends to go for more of a an oval or a squoval shape you know obviously I consult with her on what she wants before we begin in the length and the the shape and, and what have you always do a consultation with your with your customer or your client whatever uh, or your family member as uh, yeah she don't pay me <laughs> can't call her a customer she don't pay me <laughs> oh goodness but yeah just uh do your consultation find out what they want before you begin and it just uh makes makes a lot e a, a lot easier because um like i said I've, I've got another video where she changes her mind after i've applied the product and it drives me nutty but yeah you'll see in the, in when i upload that video i'll explain it all then so as you can see once i've um finished removing the majority of the product i'm going to tidy up the sidewalls and the free edge make sure they're nice and straight and get the shape that she likes so just with a hand file just get that scroll she wanted the scroll shape as opposed as opposed to the oval shape she had previously so that's why i'm rounding off the corners now if you hold the file under the free edge at an angle when you are filing you can sort of um round off those corners quite easily so that's the way i i tend to do the scroll shape so i square it up first and then i will tilt the file as you can see underneath that very free edge and that sort of files off the square edges and then you get your, your scroll shape nothing nothing too major or, or difficult to do when you're doing a short sort of sporty length of nails it's um the filing doesn't take a lot because the sidewalls are so sh uh, yeah the sidewalls are not long so there's not a whole lot of filing to do and they're now also growing really nicely underneath the poly gel as you can see they're nice and strong they're great um she actually hasn't um, had her nails done by me for a really long time we removed the product and she's just had her natural nails for a while now just with gel polish on the top so she's really pleased that her nails were able to grow out with the, the poly gel protecting them until they were strong enough for me to remove all the product and now she just has gel polish so that's great it's a, it's a good way for nail biters as well if you put product on nail biters they're more likely to be able to grow out their nails not that my daughter's a nail biter but just as, as an, as an overall um thing to do if a nail buyer wants to grow out their nails putting product on really helps them and uh, a lot of a lot i mean it doesn't work 100 percent of the time don't get me wrong some nail buyers will buy off the product but um it does encourage them we'll say to not bite and be able to grow their nails out so as you can see i finished filing that free edged into the shape that she wanted and now i'm using my cuticle pusher to gently push back her cuticles um it, it looks rough because it's sped up but i'm being extremely gentle my daughter's cuticles are very sensitive her fingers are very sensitive so if you push just the slightest bit too hard it will hurt and she'll she'll pull her hands back um they they she's not she hasn't got tough hands like i do I'm, I'm rough with my hands and yeah i'm on a lot of medication so i don't feel the pain the same way um she does obviously she's not on a whole lot of morphine so yeah she's she's not on any medication at all um so yeah her, her cuticles are particularly sensitive so i i am extremely gentle when i'm pushing back her, back her cuticles remember when you're pushing them back you're not pushing them back hard and you're not pushing them back far all you're doing is basically lifting it off the nail plate just budging it up a little bit the moment you feel resistance is when you stop pushing you don't just keep pushing harder and harder um you will hurt someone that way so yeah be gentle take your time practice on yourself um if, if you're a home user and you, you're trying to learn how to do nails uh, this is a good way um, for you to learn what it feels like and 
for you to know where where your stopping points are is to practice on yourself so you know how far you can go before it hurts and and it's all about it's all about practice at the end of the day it really is so as you can see I've uh, finished pushing back, back her cuticles and now I'm using a very tiny um, carbide bit to go around the cuticle area this is to remove any of the dead skin from the nail plate if you don't remove the dead skin from the nail plate your product will lift guaranteed it will lift because it doesn't stick well to skin and dead skin on the nail plate is what will, what will cause lifting because it interferes interferes with the adherence of the product so you want to make sure you get it off but what you don't want to do is be filing down layers and layers of the nails just want to move remove the dead skin from the nail plate and that's all that white dust that you can see that is just dead skin that I'm removing nothing else I'm not removing layers of her nail plate or anything like that I'm using a very light uh, pressure because we, do, we don't want to dig into the nails we're not trying to give her rings of fire we just want to remove the product and as you can see from the rest of her nails there are no um, grooves in her nails as her nails have grown out and I've, I've you know repeatedly put product on you can see there are no grooves in the nails where I've removed the product and that's because I'm very careful about how uh, much pressure I will apply to the nails when I'm removing the um, dead skin from the nail plate now as you can see i've switched to a sanding band and where this is where i'm going to smooth over the nails um i'm going to be removing the shine from any of the natural nail that is uh apparent and showing um of course that's to um what's the word that's to facilitate the the adherence of the product but i'm also making sure that i remove any lifted um product that i wasn't able to get with the carbide bit because what you don't want to use is use a, a coarse bit and try and remove every little bit of lifted product because you may um cut into the natural nail itself and you don't you don't want to do that so i i file as much as i can with the uh, carbide bit and then when i'm close to the natural nail i will switch to a sanding band which will be less harsh and I'm able to just remove any lifted bits much more carefully whilst not digging into the natural nail plate. Um, if you are starting out with an e-file and you haven't used one before, again, practice on yourself. If you don't um, keep that e-file bit moving and across the nail plate into different areas, it will cause a friction burn and it's really uncomfortable and you don't want to do that. It creates heat. So keep that e-file bit moving and whilst I'm going over the um, lift, lifted product I'm, I'm keeping my pressure again very light and I don't have my e-file on high I've probably got it on about a level seven at this point I'm not trying to um, remove a ton of product or anything like that so there's no need for me to have it up high so I've probably got it on like level six or seven just to whiz over any of the natural nail that's that's there remove the natural shine and remove any lifted bits and that is all i'm trying to do um and, and just to make the surface just a bit more even if there are any sort of grooves from the uh coarse e-file bit that i used previously so yeah i'll just i'll go around do all of that and then we'll get on to the next bit but whilst i'm doing that let's have a chat how are you it's lovely catching up with you guys in the comments ah uh, you guys i love you guys so much thank you for being awesome people in the frosty fam just love you all it's great i love i like you, you americans are hilarious <laughs> i just love you americans it's great the things you guys come out with is, is brilliant love it <laughs> it's so different from how um we live over here I, i'm in london and um yeah the, the things you guys come out with are just absolutely hilarious i love it it's great um we're all struggling with uh the economy and whatnot so i feel your pain over there too because we're we're yeah the government isn't doing great over here either so yeah that sucks it truly does sucks the inflation the price of fuel the price of 
electricity and gas and, and petrol and diesel and, and just everything. At the moment, we're having a nightmare with our mayor of London, who has extended the ultra low emission zone uh, to where I live. So now I've got the wonderful, um, well, anyone who lives in, in the area that I live in now because it's been expanded, it's a cost of £15 per day per vehicle to be here. And wow. We're struggling already after the pandemic. People are poor. People are out on the streets because they can't pay their rent. And you're going to start charging people that are the poorest £15 a day per vehicle to be living and travelling in the area that you, you, you are in. Wow. That sucks. That sucks so much. I really want that stupid man out of stop being the mayor i just i didn't vote for him but wow other people did unfortunately and now now we're in the uh crap hole that we're in so annoying anyway enough about me rambling on about you know politics and whatnot uh well it's not specifically politics it's just the way the world is at the moment it's just literal anywho as you can see i removed all of the dust and then i applied some dehydrator to the nails and now i am applying the acid free primer remember if you are using gel you want to use if you are going to use an acid free uh, a primer at all you want to make sure that it is indeed acid free that's what will work best with gel do not use an acid one if you are working with gel products you don't necessarily need to have the primer um, and you don't necessarily need to do the base coat like I'm doing now either with when it comes to poly gel but this is my personal preference on how I like to do it my daughter has quite um, sweaty hands and she has a lot of oil so that's why I make sure that I I'm prepping her nails as as much as possible to make sure that, that she has minimal lifting and this works for me with that when I'm working on her hands specifically to make sure that they are very well dehydrated to you know remove any of the natural oils and to, to adjust the pH balance of the nail plate then the acid free primer to make sure that it just got good adhesion then I apply the base coat as you can see um, this is this is just my routine of way of doing it if you've got someone that doesn't have sp um, particularly sweaty or um, oily nail beds then you won't necessarily need to apply the primer or the um, base coat so yeah work you when you're working on your customers your friends your family whoever it may be you have to tailor your routine to their specific needs because what works for one person won't necessarily work for the other what will cause lifting in my daughter may not cause lifting it on my own fingers you know so you have to be um that's where your client consultation you know comes in you get to know how products work on which products work on um, the customer and which products don't acrylic tends to lift a lot easier on my daughter's nails than poly gel um, even gel products tend to lift a bit easier than poly gel for whatever reason with her natural chemical makeup poly gel lifts the least on her nails I don't know why it's just the way it is so yeah you get to know which products work for a person and which which products don't and yeah for her poly gel is the one acrylic lifts gel lifts poly gel doesn't lift as much so yeah that's why we, we stick with the poly gel when it comes to her nails it's great stuff it works so yeah I'm um, just this is how I this is how I would work on a, on a person as you can see I switch from hand to hand so I do one finger at a time and I switch hands whilst one hand is in the lamp curing I'm working on the other hand on another finger and I'll just keep switching bef between so that way I don't have any downtime waiting for anything I'm always still doing something time management obviously is important when you're doing nails I'm doing my daughter's nails so I'm not in any particular rush you know she whenever she asks me to do her nails it's when a day it's on a day she has a day off from work so she's not in a hurry to go anywhere or anything like that and I can take my time and do it the way I want to do it without having to rush so and, and we we have a good old chat and and fool around and laugh and stuff so yeah I'm not in a particular hurry when I'm doing her nails but that doesn't mean I'm not 
conscious of the time it doesn't mean I want to be sitting there doing nothing um, I do want to be constantly working whilst I'm sitting there I don't want to have that downtime of doing nothing waiting for something to cure so that's why I go switch from finger to finger from hand to hand and that that's just a bit um, more time savvy if that makes sense so as you can see I apply the product to the nails then I use the brush and the slip solution and pat and press it into place now as you can see I'm sort of working the product back up to that cuticle area bit by bit and just patting it make sure it's nice and flush with the natural nail and then I'm bringing the rest of the product down to the free edge I'm also tidying up those side walls as I go along and making sure that the product isn't touching the skin and any excess product I just use the spatula to remove it from the uh, free edge of the nail now as her nails are quite short um, she doesn't need a huge apex or anything like that but that she does need some strength so they're not um, majorly thick there is an apex there but it's it's not as much as an apex that I have on my hands um, it's, it's just not necessary and we go back in with the product at the cuticle area you can see the way I angle my brush to get it nice and neat and tidy without getting it on the skin just using the tip of brush just to you know pat it and and get it flush with the natural nail and then I'm bringing the product down like I said and I'm also twisting her finger the way around from side to side and up and down because I'm looking at the nail from all different angles to make sure it's got a nice curve going in a nice semicircle from fr uh, side wall to side wall that it's nice and even on that free edge and yeah it's got um what you call it it's nice and smooth doesn't have any lumps and bumps and it's even from like I said from sidewall to sidewall that's that's what you're looking for because that makes your life a lot easier when it comes to the filing and the you know the finishing of the nails so yeah switching from finger to finger there's not much else I can say about this it is just yeah it's going to be rinse and repeat for a while so I'm going to shut up and let you watch this bit in peace and I'll be back when we get to the next section. It's 
like I can't stop, can't stop, yeah, yeah, I always knew that this would happen, yeah, you would find a new distraction, I need you more, need you here, more than I would like to admit, can we let go of tomorrow, yeah, you never break, you never lie, Never ever scared of the dark So why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind I think about you a lot It's almost like I can't stop Can't stop, yeah, yeah You never lose an argument So I've been trying hard to pretend That I'm okay, it's just a phase And everything is going just great I think about you a lot it's almost like I can't stop, can't stop, yeah, yeah. I'm back. Um, hope you enjoyed the little bit of music that you are hearing. Um, I always have music in the background. I don't often shut up long enough for you to hear it, though. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just removing the tacky layer from the nails because I'm going to be getting ready to give them a nice filing shape. So, filing time. Are you a frosty filing freak? If you are not, skip ahead to the timestamp you can see in the corner of the screen at the top and you will get to the next part of the video but for my frosty filing freaks here we go so i'm starting off with my hand file and i'm going to go straight to the uh, side walls get those nice and straight and neat and tidy now as you can see i'm working on one side of the side wall at a time um, this is so that I'm not switching, having to switch how I'm holding my nail file. Um, this is, it's all about, like I mentioned before, it's about being time conscious and, um, working smarter, not harder. If I'm, if I'm keep constantly switching from one side to the other, it, it just, it, it takes a little bit not a lot but a little bit more time so the reason why I go, I go one side of the nail first of all because I can just go boom 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 do one side of the nail then when I get to the thumb I do the other side of the nail and the free edge and it just for me this is this is my routine um, you guys know if you if you've watched any any of my other videos you know I always have a filing routine um, I've got different filing routines depending on the nails and and how my um, joints and muscles are behaving that particular de particular day but um, I will only use one routine per set of nails as it were so I'm not doing two different routines on two different on, on each hand say you know I'm going to do it the same on each finger from hand to hand so that my nails are nice and uniform and consistent um, a lot of newbies have struggle with their filing and the reason why they struggle with their filing at, and getting all their nails looking uniform and in a co cohesive similarity set of nails is because they're, they're not implementing a routine it's so important to have a good routine in 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 your filing and it will it will up your game so much if you Pay attention to the filing in the way of having a routine doing the same thing on each nail and stopping and looking 
comparing the nail to the previous nail that you did before comparing the nails from one hand to the other hand stopping and looking is so so important if you want a uniform set of nails where you don't have loads of nails looking all different shapes and sizes and lengths and widths and thickness you know just remember stop and look keep a routine whatever routine you choose to do you can have a million routines it doesn't matter but choose just one routine when you're working on one set of nails if you want to use a different routine on the next set of nails fine go ahead great awesome but when you're working on one set of nails i know i'm saying it a lot but it's really important one routine per set of nails and you, you, you'll, you'll be golden it will change your game i promise you there is there is there is there's a lot of things I can give you guys advice on, but I think that is one of the most important, helpful pieces of advice that I can give. That changed my game on the appearance of the nails I created so much was just by doing that, getting a routine and stopping and looking and comparing. It really does make a difference. Now, when I say stop and compare, I, mean, I also mean do that whilst you're um, applying the nails as well not just when you're filing do that when you're applying the nails as well make sure all of the nails have a similar thickness a similar amount of product on them you know it that way when you implement your filing routine it's going to help towards getting you that uniform cohesive set of nails that you're looking for you want the nails to all look similar and and just neat and tidy so it's so important bear that in mind practice 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 and you'll get there i promise it does make a big difference and as you can see i'm only going over the nails with my sanding band um there wasn't a whole lot of filing to do i didn't over apply products so it's just a case of um smoothing over the surface and just neatening it neatening it up a little bit that's why i'm not doing a huge amount of filing and i'm just switching to you know just using the sanding band go around that cuticle area very carefully try and don't touch the skin you know stay away from the actual skin just file the product make sure it's nice and flush with the natural nail at that cuticle area and then as you can see i'm whizzing over the top of the surface and making sure it's nice and even now you see how many times i stopped there to look at the thickness of the nail because i'm looking down the barrel when i lift up a finger i'm looking down the barrel to make sure it's even from side wall to side wall and then i'm checking it from um the side angle as well and it I'm just smoothing it over, making sure it's nice and even. And then you saw I, ru I, I rubbed my thumb over the top of the nail to make sure there aren't no, any lumps and bumps that I've missed. Because sometimes you can feel them, but you can't see them. Um, so that's, yeah, it's, it's not a hard um, filing routine to do if you've only applied as much product as you need. You need to over apply ever so slightly to be able to have room for filing without making the nails too thin. But you don't want to over apply it to the the um, extent where you, you are having to file forever to get the uh, thickness down. And as I said, because they're a short length, they don't need to be super thick. It's not necessary. So there you go. Just smoothing over. Sideward, sideward. And I could, I'm feeling it and I felt that there was a little divot there. So just whizzed over. Divot's gone. I can move on to the next now and you'll see I'm doing the same thing on each one I'm starting around the cuticle area and then I'm whizzing over the surface from side wall to side wall just smoothing it as I go I'm checking the thickness I'm making sure the free edge isn't too thick no need to have a bulky nail um, I can't stand a thick free edge it makes living with nails difficult why would you want to do that you want to make living with nails easier um, if your free edge is super thick, it makes it really difficult to pick things up, like especially coins on a flat surface. If your free edge is super thick, you're going to have a nightmare trying to pick up a coin and you'll have to use the side of your thumb and the side of your finger to actually pick up the coin as opposed to your nails. If you've got a, 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 um, a thin enough free edge that's no thicker than a credit card, it makes it a lot easier to just function in day-to-day -day living. So yeah, just bear that in mind. Don't make the free edge super thick. It's not necessary. It's unsightly in my opinion. Um, and it just makes living with nails difficult. Why, why do that? 
don't want to do that. You want you want to you want to love your nails, not despise them. <laughs> Just yeah, nice and thin, not too thin that they'll break easy. There's a there's a, there's a thi fine line between too thick and too thin, and so that's why you always want to compare it to the thickness of a credit card. That's that's all your free edge needs to be for you to be able to function in normal day-to-day -day living without breaking a nail easily. Then back over to the thumb, same again. You just have to position the hand a little bit differently when you're doing the thumb because obviously, you know, it's kind of under the hand, the palm. Don't try and twist your client's hands all over the place. Uh, make sure when you are um, doing the thumbs that you are conscious of, of, of how you're placing their hands so that they're not um, majorly uncomfortable. You don't want to make your client uncomfortable. They won't come back. <laughs> yeah, so be careful of how you're twisting your client's hands, but don't be afraid to move the hands to where you need it to be. At the end of the day, they're sitting there doing nothing. You need to see what's going on, not them. So if you've got a client who's trying, constantly trying to see what you're doing, just tell them to relax their hands and let you move their hands where it, it needs to be. But don't 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 be aggressive with it, you know, gently. But um, be firm. <laughs> My daughter, we 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 have a good old natter, and she, you know, she watches things on on her tablet. I watch things on my tablet. Both have earphones in, so we're in between watching stuff. We're having a good old natter and whatnot. But um, yeah, just uh, be firm with your clients, but not mean. You don't want to be mean. They won't come back if you're mean. Just be nice. I've, my old daughter says I've got a vice grip, so I'm always um, trying to loosen my grip on her a bit. Uh, yeah, I've got I've got man hands. <laughs> She's all like, "Mum, you're squeezing my finger. You're holding me too tight." I'm not hurting her, obviously, but she's like, "Mum, you're holding my finger rather tight there. Do you, do you, do you want to ease up a bit?" And I'm like, "Oh, sorry, babe." <laughs> it's the way it is. So yeah, grip. You want to grip their nails nice and firmly. But yeah, don't don't um, cut off this circulation. <laughs> so as you can see, I've uh, removed all of the dust and what have you, and now I'm applying the French white tips. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it would have been way better had I used the gel paint instead of the gel polish because the gel polish I'm going to be applying two layers to get it nice and opaque and bright white whereas with the gel paint I only who would have had to have done one layer which already have saved me a whole lot of time but as you can see I'm still doing my working on one finger at a time but switching hands so that I don't have any downtime so I'm going from finger to finger curing as I go whilst one hand is curing I am working on the other hand pay attention to your time like I said I'm not the fastest I'm a turtle when it comes to doing nails and my hands shake and I have to be really careful um, the, the, especially when I'm doing something as delicate as as a French white on extremely short nails my hands shake and it's not easy for me but I take my time and I do it I'm not gonna rush there's no point in rushing because you, when you're rushing you make mistakes and then you have to fix those, those mistakes so try not to, to to rush yourself too much don't put yourself under pressure to be fast just get good at it first then you can increase your time um, not increase your time reduce your time as you go increase your speed is what I mean get it get get your techniques down first then you can you can get on to your speed obviously if you're if you've got if you're a functioning working nail tech who has paying clients you want to be conscious of the time and you want to get them in and out as fast as possible but you don't want to be a slapdash service you want to give your client a, a good surface that is a beautiful set of nails that they're happy with that you haven't botched so yeah get your technique down first then you can increase your, increase your speed so as you can see I used the um, liner brush to create the shape of the curve of the French to go um, it's just easier to manage than using the brush from the bottle to create the shape especially on a shorter set of nails 
So I use my liner brush to get the shape the way I want to get that that nice um, thin line at the sidewall area. I've always got my cleanup brush on that on the at the ready because yeah I do make mistakes. My hands shake a lot, so I carry I I get that line drawn out. Then I'll use the brush from the bowl to just fill it in because it's a bit quicker. Um, I'm also making sure that I'm capping that free edge as well you don't have to necessarily cap the free edge i prefer the way it looks not everybody does it's it's you know personal choice but i tend to cap the free edge with the um, white as well as you can see there you see i run that brush side towards sidewall that's where i'm capping the free edge with the white like i said you don't have to personal preference a lot of um things with nails is personal preference it's how you or your client wants the nails to look it you know it's up to it's up to the both of you to work it out i like to cut the free edge so that's why i do it as you can see just there got a bit underneath the nail there so i just used my cleanup brush cleanup brush is your best friend always have one handy with some acetone or some rubbing alcohol to sort out any little mistakes you want to make sure you get that stuff off the skin as quickly as possible um, and you don't want to cure the product on the skin of course we want nail products to stay off the skin nail products can cause allergies and we don't want to become allergic to nail products because that means you will have to stop having your nails done Keeping nail products off the skin is important. They are nail products, not skin products. They're not designed to go on the skin. They are designed to go on the nail. So make sure you are very careful about getting product on the skin, whether it's gel polish, whether it's acrylic, whether it's monomer, whether it's um, any kind of gel products or poly gel, whatever. Keep it off the skin as much as you possibly can. So, so important. I'm just doing that second layer of the white now like I said if I'd used the gel paint I wouldn't have had to apply this second layer but it is what it is this is what I did on that particular day just wasn't thinking and um, yeah after I finished it I was like why didn't I use the gel paint what a wally that's why I showed you it in the beginning there is gel paint and it's a lot more opaque than uh, a gel polish is but it's not it's not a super gloopy thick one either it's just a decent consistency so it's not going to add loads of thickness to the free edge either so yeah I'd, I'd recommend using the gel paint as opposed to a gel polish for that for that reason it's quicker you only have to do one layer and then and, and then you're done um there's not a, a design or anything other than the french white on this set of nails like i said my daughter likes to keep it simple so yeah, it's not it's not the most exciting set of nails in the world, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway because I know there are still there's always newbies around who are looking for a video that isn't complicated because you want to start off. I mean, there's no point trying to start nails doing mad encapsulations of ribbons and and, and flowers and stuff. You want to learn the basics first and the the most basic first thing you will learn as an as as an aspiring nail tech will be the french because no matter how many years the nail industry has been going there is nothing more classic than a french pink and white it just it is what it is it's classically beautiful it will never go out of fashion in, in my opinion it's just so clean and fresh and just simple but beautiful and like I said, classic. Can't go wrong with a French. You just really can't. The length of the white that you apply is, is up to personal preference. Some people would put less white. Some people would put more white, you know. Um, is again, comes down to personal preference. I've seen um, this length of nails with just a, a very thin white line to do the French. It's up to you and your client how much white they want, whether they want their nail bed to look extended or not. So obviously that's where your consultation also comes in handy for how much, um, how far they want the white to be going down their nail. 
but you can't go wrong with a classic French. You just, nah, can't. It's, nah. <laughs> oh, almost finished. Just working on the last few fingers now. And you can see, clean up brush, anytime I get any on the skin, immediately get it off. Just, just get it off the skin. And once I'm finished with the nails, I will get her to wash her hands with soap and water to make sure any traces of product that got on the skin is removed. And um, yeah, it's, it's really important. Last few bits. I like this um, brush that I'm using. It's it's a nice little brush to use, and I've had it for ages, and it's still going strong. I've had it for years. Um, if you want to check out any of SBD London's products, there's links in my description box below. I'm not an affiliate with them. I don't get anything for showing their products or anything like that. Um, but I do know the owner, and she has sent me bits and pieces to use. Um, but I've also purchased from her. I've known her for years and um, they're, they're lovely products and they're worth having and they're, this, they're a lot cheaper than a lot of other products that are out there and they're good quality so yeah I can't knock SBD London love their products love the lady that that owns the company she's actually a good friend of mine um, I'm always transparent about whatever products I use on the channel. I'll tell you if they're rubbish or not. And um, yeah, I'm not just saying it because she's a friend of mine. These are good products. And like I said, I put my money where my mouth is. I have purchased quite a lot from her. I love the products. And I'm using on my daughter's fingers as well as I, I also use her products on my own nails as well. I wouldn't use something on my own hands that I do not trust. And I certainly wouldn't put it on my daughter. So... If that means anything to you, hopefully it means you, you, you um, know that I, I'm not one of those influencers. I wouldn't call myself an influencer anyway, but um, I'm one of those people that just peddles products for the sake of it. I wouldn't do that to you guys. I will only show you stuff that is good and works. I test everything out that I use. I'm not going to use something that's rubbish. I'm just not going to do it. No, thank you. I've turned down many, many um, companies that wanted me to showcase their products. If they're rubbish, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give you guys... Um, I'm not having you guys waste money on products that are no good. No way, Jose. Not going to happen. Anywho, we are at the top coating because we are topping it off and keeping it tough. Oh, yeah. And daughter wanted these to be matte, but as you can see, as I'm applying that top coat, this is what they would look like shiny, but she wanted the matte, and this is decent matte top coat from SPD London. I love their super top coat, which is their shiny one. It's hard wearing, it's awesome, love it. It's one of my favorite top coats ever. Um, and their matte top coat is, is fabulous as well. And you'll see after the nails have cured what they look like matt but obviously you've already seen the photos in the thumbnail of the video but you know what i mean once i've cured it you'll see clean up brush to the rescue if any gets on the skin do not flood your cuticle area in the side walls with gel top coat it doesn't look good and it will lift so get that product on the nail but if you get any on the skin in the side walls make sure you remove it before you cure it as usual try not to get it in contact with the skin but if you do get it off as soon as possible and yeah nice thin layer you don't have to put loads on you don't want it to pull in the um areas of the cuticle area or the side walls but yeah keep it off the skin always remember keep it off the skin <laughs> just bump that um brush up by the cuticle area spread out the product and you saw i don't start by the cuticle area I want to get most of the product off the brush before I go to the cuticle area and that's so that I don't flood those areas with loads of product there we go that's the last one so cure that for 60 seconds and here is the finished set I'm going to apply some cuticle oil but as you know this is the end of the video so I would like to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel spending some of your most precious time with me I appreciate you thank you ever so much if you have not done so already please join the frosty fam I'd love to have you 
uh, yeah you're welcome to join it's, it's free just you know click subscribe got some more videos coming out soon if you have enjoyed this video or it's helped you in any way shape or form please do click that like button it takes you but a second to do but it really helps my channel out and lets me know that you're enjoying the contact uh, content and if you feel like it you are welcome to leave me a comment i'm happy to talk to you but that's all i've got for this time peeps i hope you've enjoyed this one take care now i'll speak to you all again very very soon bye for now Someday soon i'm gonna make it